Uh, over the past several years, it's become increasingly clear that it's important to move beyond the war on terror. But why has the war on terror been so frustrating and oftentimes so futile? We've been conducting some research at the University of Chicago. Uh, we're publishing this in a new book called Cutting the Fuse, uh, published by the University of Chicago Press, that helps to answer some of these core questions. Well, our research team has collected the largest database of suicide attacks around the world ever assembled by any government or any think tank. Uh, it starts in 1980, it goes to the uh, uh, end of 2009, and has 2,200 suicide terrorist attacks that we have corroborated. No anonymous internet chat room. Uh, we have multiple sources corroborating each and every one of these suicide attacks, defined in the classic sense you would expect of an individual killing himself or herself on a mission to kill others. And this is the cause for my concern about the way we talk about Islam. You find that the other side, the moderate Muslims, just systematically play hide the ball with the articles of faith. There is never a candid acknowledgement that there are some unique problems with Islam at this moment in history. And there's not a candid acknowledgement that the Quran is as bad and as unified in its message as it is. There are different, you know, Bob sort of co compared the Quran to Leviticus and, you know, there's, there are evil passages in, in the Old Testament and who can explain the Inquisition. There, there, there are clear historical and theological differences that explain why it's easier not to form a death cult if you're a Christian or a Jew. That, that the Bible is a vast and self-contradictory book. It refutes itself a hundredfold. How long has suicide terrorism been around? Oh, actually, um, uh, for thousands of years, the very first suicide attackers are the Jewish zealots in Zakari in the first century uh, A.D. Um, the Jewish zealots were, try were under Roman occupation, and they were trying to foment a rebellion among the Jewish population against their Roman occupiers. Well, what the uh, zealots would do is they would uh, go up to uh, a legion of Roman soldiers, pull out a knife, slit the throat of one of the Roman soldiers, and then the the other Roman soldiers would stab or spear that person to death, um, and those attackers knew that would happen, but they were, were hoping that they would be able to foment a rebellion or an insurrection with that process, and in fact, um, that did lead to the Jewish War of 66 AD, which led to the destruction of the Second Temple and the diaspora that had occurred. So. Um, those it really were successful. It, it was successful in producing the revolt, but not yes. so successful in terms of producing the outcome that mm -hmm. they had been hoping for. And in fact, in the uh, second and third century, where uh, the Christian martyrs are becoming so prominent, that's really the heyday, if you would, of the large number of Christian martyrs. Many of them are martyring themselves, killing themselves deliberately. Um, as an act of defiance against Roman occupation, often throwing themselves on the spears mm -hmm. of Roman soldiers to m try to manifest how uh, um, they're uh, willing to sacrifice their lives to support their religion in opposite, so that it becomes not something that is not dominated by Roman occupation or suppressed by Roman occupation. Where are the, the Tibetan Buddhist suicide bombers. If oppression were enough to so derange a culture that they would blow themselves up on school buses and, and where you could get crowds by the tens of thousands calling for the deaths of non-combatants, we would see Tibetan Buddhists blowing themselves up on Chinese school buses. And uh, what we don't see, we don't see that. What we do see among Tibetan Buddhists, uh, and there are many examples of this, we see Tibetan Buddhist monks and nuns who have been tortured in Chinese prisons for decades, but really tortured, you know, with cattle prods and you know, electric shock to the genitals, coming out of, of these decades of torture, saying things like, my greatest fear while I was in prison was that I would lose my sense of compassion for my torturers. Uh, now I submit to you, given that that, that behavior, we might, we might think it's pathological on some level to have that kind of compassion, uh, but that behavior is fully explicable in terms of the ideology of Tibetan Buddhism, uh, its emphasis on compassion, its view of, of, of uh, torturing as a, an expression of a person's ignorance within a context of rebirth, I mean, it, it is anchored by a certain kind of worldview. And 
I would say to you that given what Muslims believe, uh, you will never find a Muslim coming out of decades of torture in an in Israeli prison, prison uh, who will speak in those terms at all. Uh, and uh, so that's, you know, you can react to those two examples. And so this phenomenon then is, uh, is clearly not of, of suicide terrorism. It's not limited to uh, fundamentalist Islam. Uh, that's exactly right, and that's one of the big things that jumped out of my study. You see, when I collected that, that database of the suicide attackers from 1980 to early 2004, I ended up studying 462 suicide terrorists who actually killed themselves. And the first thing that jumped right out at me is that over half are secular. Mm -hmm. uh, the world leader in suicide terrorism is the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. They're a Marxist group, a secular group, a Hindu group. Um, over a third of the Muslim suicide terrorist attacks are by secular groups such as the PKK, which is a Kurdish terrorist organization in Turkey, uh, which is also Marxist, that is anti-religion in orientation. And so it's really quite uh, misleading to believe that suicide terrorism is mainly a product of religion or specifically Islamic fundamentalism. Um, that just hasn't been the case. Of course, it depends what you mean by religion, doesn't it? Because uh a belief in a kind of ideology, whether it be officially religious or whether it be Marxist, could still take the same form of some some action that you perceive somehow is going to have some transformative effect uh, in the world. Uh, that's uh, you're quite right that an ideology, um, if it were able to produce suicide terrorism independent of specific circumstances. Um, could take the form of a religion, but in fact, what over 95% mm -hmm. of all suicide terrorist attacks around the world have in common is not a type of religion or ideology, but a specific strategic goal to compel modern democracies to withdraw combat forces from territory the terrorists view as their homeland or prize greatly. Mm -hmm. From Lebanon to Sri Lanka to Chechnya to Kashmir to the West Bank, Every suicide terrorist campaign since 1980 has had as its central objective to compel a democratic state to withdraw combat forces. I don't mean advisors with sidearms. I mean mm -hmm. tanks, fighter aircraft, armored personnel vehicles from territory that the terrorists prize. Yes, many uh, are religious, many are secular, many are communists or socialists who are pursuing, if you would, a secular re religion. But outside of that circumstance of the presence of foreign combat forces on territory of the terrorist prize, we rarely see suicide terrorism occurring. How many people did you ask whether they supported suicide bombing? You, know, it, it, you, you could have lived there a long time and asked that question a lot and still not have done anything like the job that Pew did when they went into nine countries and got a random sample, insofar as that was possible, of Muslims and asked 38,000 people that question. Okay? The, the responses were appalling. And, and the responses were appalling in countries that were the most cosmopolitan and the least uh, benighted by, by pre-modern standards. Um, I mean, this is, this is and there, there has been poll after poll after poll, none of them support this sanguine idea of I, I Muslim actually, public opinion. I actually studied the Pew poll carefully, and what it said was that in the face of an occupation where the occupier is hurting your country and your people, that this is a legitimate attack because you don't have alternative the, the means. Quest, that's, no, no, what, that, that was, that's what the Pew poll okay, said. It's in my book if you want to see the question. And the question was, do you support suicide bombing against non-combatants in defense of Islam. Okay, that is, it is an explicitly religious uh, formulation of it. Uh, and it's suicide bombing, which as Chris points out, there is a single line in the Quran which seems to suggest suicide is a bad idea. Uh, it's suicide bombing against non-combatants. Uh, and the support is astonishing, and the support is not, it's, I mean, it's interesting to consider what, what level of support we would find consoling. You know, 2%, 5%, 10%. Well, I mean, 10% is still 140 million people in this world. 
But there were countries where it was, it was 75% and 80%. And Turkey, the great Muslim success story, uh, was down around 20%. Uh, so these are not... Um, Can I ask you uh, just a question? I don't want to get people too angry, but I'll, I'll kick myself going out of here if I don't ask this question. Uh, but we had this war in Vietnam, and according to McNamara, 3.4 million people died. Mm -hmm. Died. Most of them civilians. Right? Most of them civilians. Is there a fundamental difference between killing 3.4 million people with this carpet bombing and Agent Orange or fragmentation bombs and suicide bombing? Is there a fundamental difference between suicide bombing and destroying Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all of the wood based cities of Japan in World War II? Is there a fundamental yeah. moral difference? There, well, I think that I, I don't want to speak for a moment in uh, defense of Vietnam uh, and or even in defense of Hiroshima and th things that could be given a plausible rationale for self-preservation. The pattern that we see is not explained by Islamic fundamentalism, but by military occupation. Uh, Iraq is another prime example of uh, this occupation logic at work. Um, before our invasion in March 2003, Iraq never experienced a suicide attack in its history. We also see this logic at work in Afghanistan. Before America's toppled the Taliban in fall 2001, Afghanistan never experienced a suicide attack in its history. And then, as we, after we toppled the Taliban, for the first few years, there were just a couple of suicide attacks in the country. And starting in 2006, there was a sudden explosion of suicide terrorism. Why? How did Afghanistan go from being the good war to the bad war? What happened in 2006? Did the Taliban suddenly become more religious? Um, was Afghanistan suddenly poorer in 2006? No, something else happened in 2006. The key thing that's important is that during the first several years of our occupation of Afghanistan, we had just a small number of troops in the country that weren't scattered around the country. They were concentrated in Kabul, essentially to keep Karzai alive and protect him from being assassinated. And then in October 2003, the UN gave the United States a mandate to spread its combat forces around the rest of the country. And then the International Security Forces, uh, that's the organization, the military organization of American and Western troops in Afghanistan, developed a four-stage plan to occupy the country. Stage one was to go to the north, our friends, the Northern Alliance. Stage two was to go to the west, more friends. And then starting in early 2006, that's when we went to the south and the east of Afghanistan. That's when our army occupied the Pashtun homeland of Afghanistan. And that's when suicide terrorism exploded in the country. Uh, we can identify. Um, the, uh, uh, corroborate the identities of 93 of the Afghan suicide attackers. 90% are Afghan nationals. They're not just any Afghan nationals, they're Pashtuns. Uh, those Pashtun suicide attackers are attacking mainly American and Western troops in their homeland. This is why the more we've poured troops into southern eastern Afghanistan, the more suicide terrorism has grown.